Hi, I'm MJ Hecox here at Leopold's where we like to pair our bottles with books. So for this month's Cooking with the Cap Times, we've selected a third generation winemaker from the Loire Valley. The Loire Valley is known for premium Chenin Blanc and this style is called Vouvray. Vouvray is typically off dry and we've selected the style to pair with the blistered Chichito peppers as they might add a little bit of heat to the recipe. The notes of this wine Acidity, citrus, some orchard fruit, pears, should pair beautifully with the recipe. And that candied finish should give it just the bit of balance that we're looking for here. We think you're going to enjoy. Cheers. Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to another edition of Cooking with the Cap Times. I am Chelsea Decane Jarabic of the Cap Times. And before I pass it off to our food editor, Lindsay Christians and Chef Gill, um, I just wanna thank our sponsors who help make this event happen every month. First up, we have our official kitchen sponsor where we are is Kessenix. You can shop like a chef at Kessenix because they're open to the public, so stop by. Um, and I also want to thank our um, official wine pairing sponsor, Leopold's Books Bar Cafe. You saw a video earlier, just before this, not earlier, but two seconds ago. Uh, from, <laughs> that's earlier in the evening, uh, earlier tonight. You saw a uh, video from um, MJ at Leopold's. And that wine is going to be served to our in-person guests tonight. It's what they chose to pair with tonight's dish. Um, but we have a gift for those of you at home. One lucky winner is going to win a bottle of that wine. You can pick it up right at Leopold's. And I think tonight, do we, best question? What do we think? Good prompt for everybody. Let's do best question. Everybody agreed that was the best thing to do, right? <laughs> we can also level it up uh, a game. And the first person to post a picture of their dish, if they're cooking along with us at home, and tag the Cap Times on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, we'll take it all. Um, that person, <laughs> you never know. MySpace. Whatever, you got MySpace, <laughs> Tumblr, uh, Reddit, let's keep going. Okay, not, we're not gonna check TikTok though, it's too far. Um, <laughs> post a picture of the dish you're making or a video and tag the Cap Times, and then you will win a bottle of that Leopold's wine. Um, okay, without, for, well, no, I want to plug, because we love Lauren here at Kessenix, that the cookie grab from the Culinary Ladies Collective, hosted by Giant Jones, is going on right now. You can get, you can buy those cookies still, which supports, um, proceeds from the cookie grab will benefit the Rockford Family Planning Foundation and Roots for Change Co-op. You can go to giantjones.com slash cookie grab and get your order. Uh, it seems really cool. I've never done it. I've missed out in years past, but you get a ton of cookies, right? It's amazing. I've done it multiple years. I okay. highly recommend. Yeah. Usually I like to buy a big box for the newsroom and just bring it in for everybody to eat. It's <sighs> Yum. Yeah. It says uh, each box contains 20 unique cookies baked by area bakers. So go get those cookies. Quick plug for them. I will also paste the link in the chat. And without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to Lindsay Christians, one of Wisconsin's foremost food writers and <laughs> critics, and Chef Gill. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you for being here, Gil. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you wanted to get started right away. We're going to jump right in with smoking the fish, and then we'll do a quick introduction to the dish. Yeah, yeah? absolutely. Let's I just do it. want to make sure it's done in time. Um, so this is a setup that I think you can do at home uh, if you're ambitious, uh, or outside, or on your stovetop. Lindsay asked me uh, why we would do it this way rather than just buying some smoked whitefish. Um, I think you can control the freshness this way and also the like smoked fish salad you buy at stores is usually really expensive. So we're doing Great Lakes whitefish. I get it fresh at $9 a pound. And uh, yeah, I think it'd just be a fun technique that you could implement in your house. So we're gonna get that started. The setup I have is uh, I've got a perforated pan here. I mean, this you can do it any number of ways you want, anything that would hold some wood chips on the bottom. And then you can put a colander on top of it um, or you can come to Kessnix and buy these implements and do it yourself at home. So I'm gonna just spray our perf pan with a little bit of avocado oil that Lauren picked out specifically for us uh, and drop that in here. Um, and then we'll take our fish here. So we've got uh, white fish from the Great Lakes, and we're just going to lay that out uh, in our perforated pan. What kind of wood chips do you use? Uh, I picked up apple wood chips, um, okay. like a medium uh, kind of texture, not too fine because they'll burn too fast, and not too thick because they'll 
uh, never start on fire. So and, like a couple inches maybe? Like, yeah, I don't know if the camera can get in there. I mean, not even, just like a thin layer on the bottom. You don't need to overdo it. I wanna like grab one here. Yeah, for sure. I actually bought these at Ace Hardware today. Uh, Grandpa's is conveniently next to Ace yeah. Hardware, so I go there three or four times a day. Middle size. Um, and just to make sure we get some good smoke uh, on our wood chips, I also brought a blowtorch, uh, <laughs> which is another thing you can get at Ace Hardware. Um, so we're just gonna give them a head start uh, on the wood chip smoking. And then we'll turn on the burners underneath and that should uh, control the, the fire from there on out. I'm 100% doing this outside. Yeah, for sure. That's probably <laughs> the best. There's the gas. Burn my house down. And this has a fun attachment on it too that kind of diffuses the flame. So anyway, just give me a moment here. And Lindsay, you want to crank both those knobs on full blast for me on this These left two? side too? Yeah. So we'll hit it from both sides. I don't know if I can. Wait. Yeah, that's good. Just to the other way. Yeah, all the way that way. Yeah, keep going. There it is. Boom. I'm like nervous sometimes to like candle. This is like. Does this seem like? <laughs> does it seem beyond what you would expect at home? Cook? <laughs> I mean, it depends. There are people who watch this who are very much project cooks who are like into it. You know, who want the technique. Wendy, right here. Yes, 100%. She's like, well, this is how we usually make pudding, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> So, For sure. I mean, you know, it just depends how ambitious you are. Like I said, yeah. you can save some money, uh, have fun doing it. I'm also just going to hit it with a little bit of kosher salt and white pepper before we cover it up. Why uh, white pepper? Uh, I don't know. It's just a thing I picked up from a chef. I think a lot of chefs prefer white pepper on fish. It's a little bit more delicate. Okay. Um, and we'll be able to season the fish salad the rest of the way once it smokes. So just kind of a little bit uh, to build some flavor in here. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll nice. go there. And then... Uh, we have our foil here and we'll just get her covered up and we're going to throw a thermometer in there to just kind of keep track of the temperature. Thermometers are also available for sale here at Kesnick's. We put in lots of plugs for Kesnick's today, Lindsay. <laughs> Is that the idea? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Cool. So I have done like a kind of similar smoking technique with apples and, and wood chips with apples and I used like those aluminum foil pans you can buy at like Woodman's. And I got a smaller one and a bigger one. Um, I did, it's actually a recipe that's in the book, which you can also buy at Kefnix. Um, and you can, you can see it's already but, billowing up yeah. a good amount of smoke, not to interrupt. You can see the smoke. Um, so we're going to trap that in now, turn our heat down kind of low, and just kind of plug this thermometer in here to keep an eye on, on temperature. So Nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to try and while talking to you, keep it around 200 to 250 degrees. Um, and then hopefully we'll have some fully cooked smoked fish by the time we get to this part of the meal. It smells so good already. It smells really good already. Great, great. Yeah, a good exhaust is good or just open the windows or... <laughs> um, cool. So thanks for bearing with me on that. Yes. Now we're, we're up and running. For sure. So tell us a little bit about, um, first of all, where this recipe comes from, from Bandit. Um, well, uh, we were putting together our taco menu and we knew we needed a fish taco. And honestly, uh, we got to trim the fish up. So don't want to waste anything. Um, and we do a tostada side of the menu as well. Um, we open at 11, we're open open for breakfast down the road, but uh, wanted some kind of more like early morning options. So smoked whitefish tostada kind of just, just grew from, from that uh, out of just, you know, utilizing all the product. Yeah, yeah. and Bandit is the, the new taco spot. And yep. obviously, like, I think one of the big things about it that you've talked about for a long time is the tortillas and where the tortillas come from. So yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? For sure. It's definitely the, the heart and soul of the operation. It's what, like, about seven or eight years ago, I think, about wanting to do tacos in Madison. And um, so we source, we work with a company called Masienda. They're based out of Southern California and Mexico. And they buy up crops from small farmers. They pay them a fair wage. Uh, and they distribute them to places like me, uh, restaurants like me, people like me. Uh, so we get the corn in dry, we nixtamalize it, which is the process of cooking it with calcium hydroxide. Uh, that's called nixtamalization. Uh, and then we clean that corn, we grind it through a molino, which is two kind of volcanic stones uh, that turn our corn into masa. Uh, and then we sheet that out into fresh corn tortillas all day long. Um, so every day, fresh corn tortillas. We rotate the variety of corn every couple of weeks. Um, looking forward to working with some Wisconsin farms to get corn as well. Actually, a lot of Wisconsin corn goes to Mexico anyway. Okay. Uh, so just okay. kind of getting into that loop. Um, 
there's definitely a bunch of like tortillerias that have popped up, but as far as I know, there's not any restaurants kind of going to this length every day to, to provide the guests with like the freshest possible corn tortillas. So um, yeah, we celebrate corn all throughout the place. Uh, we do a Mexican hot chocolate that's thickened with masa. Um, our tostadas obviously are just fried up uh, day old tortillas. Um, and yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of long and short of it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I included some instructions in the recipe about if you, if you don't have, you know, these fried from Bandit, which you buy a Bandit, right? Yep. We're selling those retail now. Yeah. But if, if you just have a, a tortilla at home and you're going to do it that way, you can just brush it with a little bit of oil, a little bit of olive oil, and you can, you can bake them up in the oven and they get nice and crispy too. Yeah. So I think that nice, works. Yeah. I think a cast iron skillet with a little oh, bit of absolutely. oil. Yeah. Um, if you want to set up a deep fryer on your stovetop, you can do that <laughs> do too. It, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, people fry stuff on stovetops. I, right? I think that's the thing. My college roommate had a deep fryer in our room, so uh, yeah, people do weird stuff. I mean. Yeah. All right, well, let's get started here. So where do you want to begin? We've got the fish smoking. Yeah, fish is smoking. Um, it says it's at 72 degrees, which doesn't seem accurate, um, but uh, maybe that was just our fish. There we go. <laughs> um, so the fish is at 72. This is up to about 130, so this is great. That's slowly working up. Yeah, so I have banded tacos and coffee, and then I also have Grandpa's Pizzeria and Gibbs Bar, and I wanted to do something from each of the places. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought right. we'd start with a cocktail from Gibbs um, so that you could all have something to drink while we work through the rest of the menu. I love this. Um, I love this. If you haven't been to Gibbs and Grandpa's, we, we have a garden out back. Uh, a guy who's a friend of mine now uh, started about nine years ago. He took over the backyard as his master's in sustainable agriculture, um, like thesis for Edgewood. Um, so he put in a bunch of swales to stop rainwater from getting back into the city. He planted a small orchard of pawpaws, uh, which we now harvest every fall and make pawpaw pina coladas at the bar. Um, and we're just always kind of doing some fun stuff there. It definitely doesn't like support a whole dish year round, but it's a lot of fun, like supplemental stuff. And so one of those was he grew a couple beds full of watermelons last year and we harvested them in the fall and we didn't want summer to end. So we called this cocktail two more days of summer. Nice. And uh, it's full of watermelon juice and just kind of like bright flavors. And we've transitioned it. Same similar cocktail now. It's called Don Donna Summer Radio and we play that station a lot. Um, but it's just good. Like especially as you get into colder times, you don't want summer to end. Uh, it's nice to have like a tropical juicy cocktail. So I can show you guys how how to build that. I did leave my glassware over here. That gardener is Gavin Egan, yeah? Yeah, that's yeah. him. Yeah, he's great. He's still he's um, excellent. Yeah. He still looks after the garden. Um, and he's we've got two small garden beds out front of Bandit that he's managing as well. Uh, we had a whole bed full of spicy peppers and another one full of uh, edible flowers. Yeah, the uh, edible flowers are great. I've started growing more edible flowers since that garden came in. Um, and I was I was writing about it, and I was like, you know what? I can never grow as many tomatoes as we're going to eat, but I can grow as many ed edible flowers as we need. <laughs> like, I got that part, and it makes salad feel fancy. Yeah, it makes you feel fancy. Yeah. Some of them actually taste like things too, but mostly it's just about feeling fancy. <laughs> um, so we've got some marigold gems that have like a bright citrusy pop. This is Iqbal, by the way. She doesn't want to be on camera, but she's going to do all the work. Um, so we're going to fill our double old fashioned glass here with ice, um, just to kind of get a measurement of how much ice we're going to put in the cocktail. Um, cause we're just going to dump everything back into the cocktail glass. So we're going to build in our large tin, uh, we're going to fill it with ice. And then, uh, I have my cheat sheet here. We're going to start with a one and a quarter ounce of gin. We're using Citadel at the bar right now, so that's what I brought with. So one and a quarter gin, a uh, quarter ounce of mezcal. This is uh, Vita mezcal, super appro uh, approachable price point, delicious stuff for the money. And a smaller one, like a smaller amount of the mezcal in, in comparison to for the For sure, gin. so yeah, one yeah. and a quarter to a quarter. Right. Yep. And then we're going to go in with fresh lime juice at half an ounce. Uh, next thing we'll add is our watermelon juice. So we do this through a Super Angel juicer, but you could also just blend it and strain it through a chinois or not strain it if you don't mind like a little bit more um, pulp in there. If you did a double strain when the cocktail is done, could you get away with a more pulpy watermelon juice or no? Um, yeah, maybe, but we really like the crushed ice in this drink. Um, so that's kind of why we do what we call the dirty dump here rather than <laughs> straining it. Uh, so we're going to go with a full two and a half ounces of watermelon juice. And then uh, we have this ginger cordial. Um, so this is something we make at the bar. We take one part fresh ginger juice, which again, you need a pretty heavy duty juicer for. Uh, we cook that with two parts turbinado sugar. 
uh, and then we bag that and let it sit overnight with some lemon peel and cardamom. Um, doesn't need to go in a vacuum bag, could just sit in a mason jar like that. You could also just get a high quality ginger beer and sub it out if you don't feel like going through that process. Um, but it does make obviously a big difference to have this product. So we're gonna do a heavy quarter ounce uh, into there. Um, and that is the extent of our build. So then we're gonna take two kefir lime leaves. Uh, I buy these at Midway. They get deliveries on Thursday. They don't get them every week, um, but when they're good, you can pick them up Friday or for a few days they're around. And just like really bright, uh, delicious lime uh, flavor and aroma there. Um, just gonna check on our fish. You will see in the recipe that I refer to those as makrut lime. <laughs> they're the same thing. Um, just generally, people aren't saying kefir as much anymore. They're, the name has changed. Oh, okay. So just FYI, they yeah. are the same. Yeah. Um, but makrut lime, it's the same. Take Thank it. you. Yeah. Thank you. And mm -hmm. if you can't find those, uh, just some lime peel. Take your Swiss peeler and take some peel of lime and throw it in the shaker would be uh, almost as good. So then we're going to shake this pretty aggressively for about 15 to 20 seconds. We really want to crush the ice up. Uh, my bartenders will give me grief about this technique. Uh, it's not very good, but it gets the job done. Uh, just make sure you put a finger over the tin so it doesn't fly <laughs> against the back wall. I'd say we're about there, and then you can just squeeze, um, separate your tins, and then since you've measured everything out, it should fill in there real nicely. Um, it's so pretty. And you know what? I forgot a thing, but it's TV, so I can fix it. So uh, the last component of this is actually a chili lime rim. So we're going to dump this in lime juice, and then give us like a quarter to a half of the rim with this. Uh, it's toasted arbol chilies that I grind in a spice grinder, uh, fresh lime zest, and kosher salt. Um, and I just do half the rim because it does get kind of spicy, um, so we want to give people the option to add it to their cocktail as they see fit. So uh, do you want this one or should I give it to one I, of our guests? You should give it to one of our guests. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> In uh, other words, I definitely want it, but for yes, sure. please, and, Elizabeth, enjoy. And, <laughs> it falls behind the scenes. She's going to make them for the rest of you guys, so those are, those are on their way. So. That is the Donna Summer Radio Cocktail the from Gibbs. The margaritas at Bandit also have the rims. Yeah, same rims. So, yeah, yeah. I, I've kind of run out of tricks. Um, <laughs> so they, they cross back and forth between the places. The chili lime rim was something we were using at Bandit already when we, uh, when we decided to put this cocktail on at Gibbs, and it just fit. So you'll see things that kind of cross over back and forth between the different places. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also in the recipe, I included a note about Zocalo spice, which is a deliciouser spice. It's so good, it would be perfect on this. It's great to do like toasted arbol chilies and have like a, a separate coffee grinder, not the one you use for your coffee because your coffee will taste like chilies. Um, but I, I put the Zocalo, a reference for that in the recipe because that's what I would use if I was doing this at home because it's excellent and it will do kind of, a, have a similar kind of chili lime Salt yeah, yeah, or tahine is a, is yeah, a similar one that you can pick great, up yes. super easily. Delicious are just local, so yep, yeah. For sure. So awesome, thank so, you. Yeah, now we're drinking. Uh, <laughs> what's next? Uh, what's next is either the shishito pep. Yeah, that'll be next. Yeah. Are we supposed to talk more about other stuff or just jump, we don't need jump to. right we can into just jump it? Right yeah. In. yeah, okay, yeah, I wanted not. to fill the hour. Um, <laughs> I cool. think you will. All right, we'll see. Do we have so, any questions, Chelsea? Um, no questions, but I wanted to point out that our favorite John Cavalli <gasps> Yay! commented. He's watching at home. Hi, Hi John. John. We've got the cam here. He said, growing my own McRut lime trees McCrute, yeah. here McCrute? at home. Oh, nice. Is that how you say that? McRut McCr I think lime it was trees? McRut? I don't know. McRut. McCrute. Thanks for watching, John. <laughs> we expect to see your picture. Yeah, it's awesome. I actually purchased a bunch of like uh, seedlings of uh, obscure citrus from a place in nice. Georgia that we've been trying to grow on the platform at Bandit. They don't take great to this climate, but we've got a kefir, we've got a yuzu, um, some rancor cool. lime, or sorry, what, tell me the word again. The macrut lime. Macrut lime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lime. thank you. So, uh, yeah, let me know cool. if it yields anything. That would be that'd be awesome. Ours are, ours are not doing the okay, best. Okay, yeah, but, send yeah. us your tips. Because yeah. on Twitter, he's our... Um, our in-house celebrity, Muskrat John. <laughs> Anyways. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Apple's Apple's uh, designer, right? Yeah. The game? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, cool. it, it, is, it is really interesting. I feel like you are often incorporating some of these, like, brighter citrusy flavors at Grandpa's, too. Um, and yeah. just and, and the flavors, not just from, like, one part of the world. Right. No, for sure. It's I, uh, you know, I when I started Grandpa's, I kind of felt like I'd had enough cooking experience to sort of take all of my experiences and create my own uh, sort of style. 
uh, as much as one can, you know, without completely copying everybody you've worked for. Um, when Grandpa's was just opening, I kind of compared it to like uh, a little a little girl or a little kid that got to pick out their clothes for the first time. I just like <laughs> tried on everything. Like there were dishes on the menu that didn't make sense at all, but it was my restaurant, so I could do whatever I wanted. So it was fun. I mean, I spent the first two to three there, years there almost every day and just kind of constantly changing the menu. Now I have a, a kind of next generation crew that's really taken ownership of it. and. Uh, I just kind of support them and more of my times at Bandit these days. Yeah. But it's definitely, um, I didn't like, it's certainly not an Italian restaurant. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. we put pizzeria on the front door and that kind of tricks some people into coming in and trying other things. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. So I did want to like make the connection too. Like I, I think I, I noted this I, when I was writing about this event was how, you know, you're doing all the stuff with the tortillas and with the corn. And to me, it's very connected to like making, making mozzarella. Like you were making mozzarella like every day for a while. We still do. For Nine and a half years now, we make mozzarella fresh every day. I mean, we get our curd from Grande, but we, we, you know, we chop it up, we boil it, we stretch it, we season it. Um, so yeah, still doing that. Um, yeah, I, I saw the, I saw the definite similarities that just like the dough. Every day I was making pizza mm -hmm. dough, and now every day we're making masa. You know, so <laughs> there is like this just kind of like. Uh, you know, starting block for for building good, you know, wholesome food. Yeah, we do have a question now. All right. Okay. Hooray. Uh, Kathy asks, um, wondering why you left the skin on the white fish. Oh, good. Uh, we're gonna pick it off um, once it's done smoking, actually, and that will protect the fish itself a little bit from the heat underneath. Sure. Uh, and it'll yeah, it'll just come off pretty clean once it's smoked. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good, good Leave question. Leave it on, Kathy. Good question. Yeah. A lot of times, a lot of times when we when I like saute fish or sear fish too. We'll do it skin side all the way, like 90% of the way, and then just flip it and like just kiss it on on the yeah. actual meat side, yeah. just because yeah, it's it's going to be protected. You're going to get a crispier skin, and and uh, yeah, it just keeps the meat uh, moistier. Yeah. Katie Dean, um, I was just wondering, so in the tray that you have below there, is it just wood chips only, or just, do you have water or anything? She's asking about the wood chips and whether there's water in with the wood chips in the smoking fish. Um, so I actually haven't done it this way in a while. We have one of these fancy combi ovens at Bandit now, so I do it in there. But as you said that out loud, I was reminded that I used to soak the wood chips for a little while just so they don't burn as much. I did not do that this time, um, and it went pretty quick. So I would uh, suggest that perhaps, yeah, soaking them and then Ooh. straining them out of the water and letting them sit for maybe a half hour before you start your process will just get like a gentler smoke on the fish, but going in, yeah, just like, yeah, slightly damp chips would be great. Yeah, I mean, you do start it like pretty hot to get it going. Yeah, no, it, it's yeah. actually, we um, uh, we're, we got there in a hurry. Um, <laughs> it looks pretty nice, so that's great, no worries there. Um, we'll just let it continue to kind of gently warm while we work on the next dish, if you All like. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so we have shishitos? Yeah, we're doing shishito peppers. Um, again, just pulling from my background, this was, uh, there was a, bring them up and show people what they look oh, like. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. uh, we got more floating around here. Oh, yeah, good. Okay. Cool. So these are shishito peppers. Um, I think they're Japanese in origin. These ones are grown in Verona, not quite as exotic, <laughs> um, but by a pepper farm called Savory Accents. Ted and Joan own it. Um, yeah, great people. Um, so when I was living in San Diego, there was a yakitori place just around the good. corner, which yeah. does a bunch of skewered meats. One of my favorite places to hang out. And this is really like a recreation of how they did it there. Mm, okay. So when I moved to Madison, and I mean, I would say Shishito started blowing up like six or seven years ago. Local farms started growing it, and Tori, yeah. Tori started buying them all up. Here. And oh. Dan Fox and Tori and I <laughs> raced to the farmer's market to try and get there first for the first ones of the season. Uh, and then I did a few dinners out on Ted and Joan's farm, and they just reserved the first ones for me, which was nice. <laughs> Um, That's the way to do it. Yeah, so in a perfect world, um, if you could do this anyway, I would yeah, get like cool. really, really hot charcoal going outside and blister them over charcoal. Uh, but we do it this way at Grandpa's indoors, and it turns out a pretty good product. So just, just a gas burner, you know, put a rack over the top so they don't fall in, and they're just skewered on bamboo. Um, so we're just going to blister one side and then give them a flip. And uh, I don't know how close the camera gets, but those are coming this together really so nice. And then once they're done, I'll show you, we're, we're going to dress them here, we're going to put them in a bowl and we're going to toss them uh, with a few more uh, Asian flavors, kind of heavy on that side tonight. So this is a product I buy that's delicious um, from uh, Oriental Mart on Park Street, not Oriental Food Mart, that's where I get some other things. Oriental Mart, this is one that she brings in, they use it as salad dressing a lot, the shop owners, and it's just like a yuzu shoyu, so yuzu and soy, and it's delicious and just like bright and citrusy. 
Um, so we'll just go ahead and get the other half of the skewer done as well as Iqbal continues to hand out cocktails. The back of it says Umaji Mura Ponzu Shoyu. I was like, is it Ponzu as well? And it does say Ponzu yeah. on here because that's citrus soy. Citrus yeah. soy, same thing. Absolutely. So just a, like a yuzu soy. Yeah. So if you don't want to go, uh, uh, if you don't want to go buy a bottle of this for 15 bucks, Ponzu would be a fine sub. Also, just like soy sauce and fresh lemon juice I love that, would be yeah. fine too. Yeah. 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 Um, so we're almost done with this first skewer here. Yeah, and sometimes turning the heat off before you try to rotate them is a good idea, but a trained professional. <laughs> chef Yeah, exactly. They're, they're less chef-y these days. I more kind of manage people than less <laughs> chefing. Um, yes, and Kathy's got a question. Um, thanks, Kathy, for asking so many good questions. How about blistering the peppers in a cast iron? Would that work well? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think it would work well. Um, yeah, I don't see any reason why not. Uh, I like the flame. I feel like it gets like more of the nooks and crannies of the pepper. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's what you got to work with, eh, like get it nice and hot. Uh, and throw them in there and that'd be cool. And then also, where do you buy your white fish? White fish? I mean, I go through a, a fish supplier, Fortune Fish. Um, so if you weren't a, a restaurant, where would you go shopping we for fish? Usually good question. Unofficial, so, kid, or unofficial grocery sponsor so, is Metcalf's. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's Metcalf. funny, I was just gonna say Metcalf's. Yeah, so I just went to a Eat Wisconsin Fish, Wisconsin, Wisconsin Sea Grant event. And I, I knew this was coming up, and I was like, okay, so where do people buy white fish? Where do you get smoked white fish? Um, I am really loving Burke and Benham for fish lately in Madison. They're the excellent. On Monroe? on Monroe Street. Yeah, yeah. it's a nice little shop they're for really, sure. They're really cool. Um, obviously, you know, the Madison Fish Center, um, the Seafood Center, sorry. The Seafood Center um, is always great, but Metcalf's has great white fish. Um, I also think maybe Whole Foods could set you up. They do whole octopus, so they must have white fish. Yeah, and I bet if you go to your local seafood vendor and just ask them to bring it in, they'll typically, you know, do that for you. Yeah. So here, nice and blistered all the way around. We're just going to drop them off of our skewer into this bowl, and we'll keep some more going back here. I got a cocktail. How are you doing on a cocktail? <laughs> cool. You want to come manage these? <laughs> so nice. Excited. I love anything with a rim. rim. That sounds probably bad. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, think that, I, think, I think that's perfect. All right. So, uh, you know, as liberally as you want to dress this, um, just again, use your soy. Sometimes I'll throw some fish sauce in here, too, which is my favorite on everything. I keep a mason jar of fish sauce in the fridge with Thai chilies chopped up in it and just kind of spoon it onto everything. Goodness. Um, I, I like heat. It's an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then some fresh lime zest. If you want to do lemon zest, too, if you could find fresh yuzu, please bring me some. Um, that'd be amazing. Maybe our, our, our fellow watching is going to grow that next and he'll bring some over. So there was a comment of uh, a different person. Patrick said, I've got a couple of macro lime plants in pots doing well in our climate Ooh. in a bright, cool room in winter. I harvest the leaves often, and this year I'm getting my first fruit. The leaves are the real attraction, but the fruit zest has some of the aroma too. Amazing. Ooh. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Super cool. Um, and some people were asking about the grandpa's um, menu, but I just put the link in the chat for everybody. Okay, to great. your website so great. you can see that. And these shishitos uh, go on the menu every summer. There's probably about two weeks left of season. Um, so yeah, we have our yuzu uh, shoyu, uh, some fresh lime zest, and then togarashi, which is another just like staple in my life that shows up everywhere. So this was common at yakitori restaurants as well, be on the table. Um, it's uh, chili flake, orange peel, seaweed, white sesame seed, black sesame seed. So just all things that are delicious. So um, depending on, you know, it's not overly spicy, um, for some people it is, but depending on how you want that. So uh, lime zest, yuzu soy, uh, and togarashi, and that's, that's really it. Um, and then these will go still hot into our bowl here, um, just like so. Uh, and then the last piece will be these bonito flakes. Um, again, it's just like Verona peppers and everything at the Asian grocery store. Um, <laughs> I go to Oriental Food Mart for these. Um, you'll find Bonito Flakes at other stores that are like tiny little flakes. They kind of taste like fish food, not very good. So Bonito is uh, typically skipjack tuna that's been dried and then shaved paper thin. And if you throw these on top, uh, when the peppers are still warm, they'll kind of like dance around from the heat a little bit, which is a fun trick at the table when you drop them off. Um, it's interactive food. It's just like, it, it's like theater. For sure. Uh, the stems aren't going to kill you. Typically, the way I eat them, though, is just grab it by the stem, eat the pepper. Uh, it's really just like a sweet pepper. One in ten will have a little bit more heat to it, is what they say. So once in a while, you get one that's got a little bit of heat to it. But like 
goes great with this cocktail we just made you or with an ice cold Sapporo is just like the best thing ever. I will say, I've had this dish a bunch mm. because I love it. Um, and I, the togarashi, when you get heat, it's from the this togarashi spice. It's not from the peppers, um, which is what I thought originally. I was like, oh my goodness, these peppers are spicy. No, 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 it's, it's, it's the chili flake in the Here's a bowl for you in if the you seasoning. want to just dump them in. Yeah, so if you want to dial the heat back, if you're making this at home and you're not super into spice, that's where you do it, is the spice blend. Um, and we'll just send this first one over here this time. You guys can share, and Iqbal will continue to roast up those peppers. Awesome. Um, for the rest of you, yeah. And we'll just keep cruising into the next yeah, dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right, so uh, for the third dish from Bandit, we're gonna do that smoked white fish tostada that we started early. Uh, and this will be a fun technique to learn if you guys haven't done it already. We're gonna make some aioli uh, to go with it. So homemade, uh, Iqbal and I had a conversation on the way over about the difference between aioli and mayonnaise. And uh, I thought it was just a fancy word for mayonnaise. Um, she thought maybe there was garlic in it. Do you know the you exact know, difference? It is kind of a fancy word for mayonnaise. Um, it, it is a, an emulsion just like mayonnaise. Yep. Sometimes with aioli, like I, I do think there's garlic, but off, often you'll see like smoked paprika aioli or this other kind of aioli. So it doesn't, you know. Yeah. I, I feel like aioli just means mayonnaise. I did try to make it the other night and I've made mayonnaise a fair amount and I totally broke it. So it is yeah. still easy to break. <laughs> yeah, so speaking of that, I didn't actually prepare any, so I'm hoping this goes well. Um, we're gonna make it on the fly here. In culinary school, we learned to do this all by hand with a whisk, so you can kind of get used to what it looks like when you're gonna start to lose it and uh, try not to do that. Um, so uh, I start, you know, and like, like Lindsay was saying, you can flavor your aiolis with just about anything you want. I start most of mine the same way. Uh, with uh, some Dijon mustard. This is going into a smoked whitefish salad, so I feel like heavier on mustard is not a problem. It also helps it emulsify, exactly. which you need at home. Like, yep, it's a stabilizer, so it's yeah, a, yeah, it's, it's gonna help hold your emulsification together when you use some extra mustard, and it's delicious, so that's a win-win. Uh, and then here we've got some rice vinegar. Uh, start with about a tablespoon. You can start lighter. Uh, you can always add more at the end. Uh, and then we're gonna do some fresh lemon juice. So the rice vinegar that you're using, is it a seasoned rice vinegar or unseasoned? Uh, unseasoned. Okay. Yeah, I like to do it myself, right? And uh, I think the more you can control the seasoning and less buy yeah, things yeah. that are already seasoned, the better. So we'll do about half a lemon worth of juice to start here. And then what's next? Uh, egg yolks, that's an important part. So as a rough idea, I say each egg yolk can hold about eight ounces of oil. Um, so. I've got four egg yolks here just for safety, um, which will hold much more oil than we really need. So the yolks are what we're going to emulsify the oil into. So just like over egg yolk it, and that's like your. You don't want to go crazy. Egg Obviously, egg it's also egg yolk. You don't want to eat a ton. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I've got 16 ounces of oil here, so I went with two extra. Um, and yeah, too much, and it'll get loose, and you know, yeah. not what you want. So. Uh, one extra, like based on those numbers, I think is a good way to go. This is also an opportunity because you're going to have egg whites to have a whiskey sour with the egg white in it. For sure. That's what we should have done. <laughs> if, if time left. I'm just saying, it's a way to use egg whites or make meringue. I mean, do what you want. But For sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to throw a couple garlic, uh, cloves of garlic in here. I'm going to put a pinch of salt in here. Um, it's good to get some in the start. Uh, it'll blend in better. Uh, and then the distinguishing factor in this one is I've got some preserved lemon. Um, that's gonna go in here. So this is something that uh, takes a little bit of not active time, but is like one of my favorite things to keep in the fridge. If you take Meyer lemons when they're in season and you cut them about three quarters of the way through, kind of open up the inside and then rub them with salt. And I put a little bit of sugar in mine, mash them down into a jar, cover them with lemon juice, let them ferment uh, in a cool room for about a week and then put them in your cooler for a year in your fridge and forget about them. Uh, it just brings out the sweetness. It's a really unique, fun flavor and like just good for a lot of different things. So um, you guys all planned a year and a head, a year in advance for this, <laughs> the right? The recipe that I use is on Bon Appetit. I make preserved lemons and I love them. And you could do them on your kitchen counter and I just do like a flip for f about five days and then they go in my fridge. I've given them away as gifts. Mm -hmm. They are Amazing, and like it's it's so little preserved lemon makes a huge difference in what you're making, especially if you ever do anything with like, like Moroccan food or yeah. like putting it in rice. Like it's just it's so, I am obsessed with preserved lemon, and I always have them on hand. For sure, but yeah. You can start them with some different flavors too. These are just straight up salt, but you can throw some star anise in there or mm -hmm. cinnamon stick or mine are super or, basic, yeah. Yeah. They're just um, salt. You use sugar, but yeah, I just yeah, salt like it's like I think it's like twenty to one salt to sugar yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, so cool, so we have all this in here. We're gonna start our food processor. 
and let it run for 20 to 30 seconds till the yolks are a little pale and everything's uh, incorporated. And then we're just gonna slowly add our oil. Uh, this is just canola oil. I like using rice bran oil, but there's a shortage in the country right now. So canola or vegetable. Um, like an olive oil is going to be a little heavily flavored for me. It uh, gets bitter even. It gets um, weird. I'll, I've, I've made aioli with olive oil before, and it does not work. Yep. Um, so something much more neutral yes. is definitely the way yeah, to go. Yeah, grapeseed, canola. Yep. Avocado, if you really want, is pretty oh, yeah. neutral. Yeah. I didn't uh, know there was a shortage of rice bran working. Yeah, no. I had something I... Rice bran, it's, uh, yeah, where's rice bran come from? Crazy. Yeah. I assume from the outside yeah, of from the rice. rice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's, I started cooking with it at a restaurant in Scottsdale, and it's what I've always used. It's got a really high smoke point and a very neutral flavor. Um, so just great for dressings, great for cooking, great for everything. So you can see the, the yolks are much more pale now. Um, so now we can just start to, um, you can do this in a blender if you want. Uh, you can do it by hand with a whisk. Um, there's definitely different ways to go about it. So just slowly adding, making sure uh, you don't see a lot of oil separating from your mixture in the food processor. Um. I have done this using an immersion blender, although to be perfectly honest, that is how it broke the other day. <laughs> but I wasn't using the mustard. I was like, I'll just use the eggs and a little like lemon juice or whatever and some oil. And I, I was cursing. I mean, it's, it's egg yolks and oil. Like, it's not that expensive to like throw it. Down well, the and drain, if it breaks, it if, if it breaks, uh, you can clean your vessel, whatever you're working with. Put a couple fresh egg yolks in it and re-emulsify your broken mixture um. back into the egg yolks, um, which is something we definitely uh, are proponents of in the kitchen because you can't afford to just be throwing out um, quarts of oil at a time and all the other stuff. So you can re-emulsify your broken mixture. We should have done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're mad, and you, you don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I was so. mad. It's understandable. <laughs> I was irritated. So this is coming together pretty good, luckily for us. Um, we'll go ahead and put our whole pint of oil in there. Um, and really, I'm looking for like a consistency. If you want it to be thicker, you can add more oil. If you want to thin it out, you can go back with lemon juice or even water if you don't want to adjust the flavor, or mice, more rice vinegar, depending on what you want it to taste like. Um, so here you can see there's kind of like ribbons in there, I would say, if you want to look at that. A uh, nice stiff mayonnaise. Um, we'll just make sure it tastes uh, relatively like what we're looking for, but it's on camera, so it doesn't really matter, I suppose. <laughs> cool, and that's delicious. Um, a little salty already from the preserved lemon, so that's why I went light on the seasoning on the fish. Nice. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, even if you want to make less aioli, like if you're like, ah, we're just two people here, we're going to make less aioli, you can't cut aioli recipes and use that method. It doesn't work. Ask me how I know. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, I think it's just not enough. Like, I was like, I'll use like a half an egg yolk or something like that. It just, it didn't work. It's it hard wouldn't to come make together. Small it's of it. hard to make small amounts, and it doesn't last forever. So you just have to eat a lot of mayo. I think, I think if you want to make small amounts, you should definitely try to do it by hand because by like, hand yeah. might work. Yes. Yep, for sure. Because the food processor, just the, you know, there's too much surface area. It's, it's not going to work. See, he knows why it didn't work. So I'm gonna just kind of scoop our fish here Whoa. off the skin. Um, it's got some good color from the yeah. smoke, actually. And it just sort of falls apart in the pan here. Like yeah. it smells good. I'm going to show them really quick. Yeah, for sure. Easy. I just want you to see what that fish looks like. Isn't that great? Yeah. All right. And actually, fortunately, in this way, too, we did spray the pan. But when you do this, a lot of the skin will just stick to the pan, too. And you can just kind of peel the meat off. So typically, we would chill this fish before we build our salad. But we're going crazy tonight. We're going to do a warm. <laughs> a warm smoked whitefish salad. Um, but this is great, I mean, because this you can make and even freeze and just have like your own homemade smoked whitefish salad around. It smells around. really um, good. Yeah, great on bagels, obviously, or, you know, whatever you want to do. So here's our whitefish. Um, smoke your whitefish, Yeah, you smoke your own whitefish, people. <laughs> yeah, don't be scared. Mm. Um, we'll see if it tastes good. Yeah, it's good. Nice and lightly smoky. Do you want to get in there or, or not? I mean, no big deal. I don't think I'm not going to do it. Right yeah, we now. can wait till it's finished. Yeah. No worries. Um, so to build our salad, you know, we already put a lot of work into our aioli. That's the main flavor there. Um, yeah, I'll take that over this way. Mm -hmm. Again, hopefully it doesn't break from the heat of the white fish, but I think it's going to be nice this way. Maybe we're changing the game. Um, so you can just go right with your mayonnaise in here as much or as little as you want to kind of bind the fish together. Oh, it's spicy. 
Um, Lindsay, you want to help me in the meantime? Yes. Yeah, so take this bowl and dump those watermelon radishes into it. I'm show you All right. Okay. Yep, that one there. All right. And then uh, squeeze that other half of lemon through that strainer onto the radish with a pinch of salt, please. So that's sure. going to be one of the garnishes for this tostada. Any other questions in the meantime, Chelsea? Are we all out of questions? I think we're out of questions for nice now. Nice julienne radish. So oh, wait, did you, did you John said, I did it a food what other right? fish might work with this presentation? Uh, yeah, what would you say, Lindsay? I mean, it's a good question. I feel like I would want something that is a little bit of a firmer fish, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, I'm trying to think. You could you could go more toward like a cod or a halibut or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean I think salmon's to. uh salmon would be pretty, great. pretty obvious choice for that one. I mean smoked salmon, yeah, smoked, smoked salmon. whitefish. Uh people use sable, I think too. Smoked but trout. Smoked you know? trout would be mm -hmm. great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh so all we're gonna do for seasoning this then is uh some smoked paprika. Um don't mind my hands. A little bit more uh white pepper. All right. Squeeze and that. uh what and that's just in? about it for our salad. Thanks for your help, Lindsay. Sure. Oh, oh, and then uh, yeah, I think white pepper and, so and cool. black pepper, tell cherry peppercorns or whatever is is pretty vastly different. Uh, I don't know if you've tried them side by side. Oh. I mean, here's white pepper if you want. Um, uh, just more it's subtle so for sure. Um, so nice for a delicate fish. So here is our whitefish salad. We'll just give it a taste, and then we can build our last dish. Awesome. Yeah. You can do Remind me the seasoning in here. What is this rad? The, is it paprika? It's paprika, yeah. yeah. And it needs just a little bit more salt. Like so happy to do this at the end rather than have it be too salty at this point. That smells great. Yeah, so paprika, white pepper, and then, you know, everything else that went into our aioli. And not much more than that because we don't want to overpower everything. We still do want to taste that nice smoked fish. So yeah. we have a couple more questions. Now's a good time. time. Now's a great time. So Fred Swanson, shout out to Fred for Yay, watching. Fred. Hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. Hi, Fred. Look, Fred. Beloved Fred. I like that guy. Um, Everybody now likes we've Fred. Got, <laughs> we've got a cocktail. We've got a wine pairing for this event, or for tonight's dish. But Fred mm -hmm. wants to know what beer would work well for Ooh. this fish dish. I literally. For the fish dish? Yes. Um, we want to go first? Literally no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. I <laughs> drink any beer. <laughs> I'd say like a Hefeweizen uh, or a Whit beer or something like that, something with some clove or orange peel, or if you're a bandit, uh, we serve Pacifico on tap, and we've also got Yum. a gluten. We've also got a gluten-free hiking boots blonde from Alt Brew. They're like oh, cool. uh, the only exclusively gluten-free. So that's a nice thing. The corn tortillas are gluten-free. Like a lot of what we do is gluten-free there. So we even brought in that beer exclusively so that we could have a gluten-free batter on our tempura uh, fish taco. Nice. Yeah. That's really or, cool. Or if you want to go, you know, Japanese. I was saying earlier, Sapporo. A nice cold Sapporo would be great. Um, yeah, does Fred have a suggestion? Uh, Fred just said fantastic, but yeah, right. Fred, hit us up if you've got a suggestion. <laughs> For sure. I mean, I feel like he would know Fred. <laughs> yeah, Fred, know, Fred knows the industry better than any of right. us. Right. <laughs> yeah, Fred, come on. Um, one more question quick from Kathy. Is there potential for the warm white fish to curdle the aioli? Uh, yeah, there's definitely that potential. Um, typically, we'll chill the fish down. So if you're doing it at home uh, and not need it for the sake of an hour, I would chill your fish first and then build the aioli in. Here, I did kind of break it up and spread it out to lose a lot of that um, the heat from the fish, so I wasn't too worried about it at that point. But yeah, at home, definitely chill your fish before you build your salad. Okay, and then Fred did say or ask something from Columbia, Missouri? Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got good friends together down in uh, Broadway Brewery in Columbia, Missouri. Um, he brings up a Mexican lager with lime and sea salt in it that's Ooh, terrific. So they yum. come up every year for the great taste and how Fred and I met each other and our love blossomed. Aww. Yeah. I know Fred from church. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Fred's the best. Um, cool. So we've got our tostada, uh, which you can purchase from Bandit, or as Lindsay said, uh, different options for making at home. Uh, and then some garnish. So this is pickled red onion. Um, pickled, we actually, we julienne the red onion, we drop it in boiling water for about five seconds, and then we pull it out and just toss it with some lime juice and kosher salt, uh, and let that sit for uh, a day to a week. So no actual vinegar in this one, just lime juice and salt. Uh, actually something I borrowed from Rick Bayless and the Frontera cookbook, how he does it. So if it's good enough for him, I think it works for us. So you're putting it. What's that? 
Do you know why he boils it? Uh, it, it, it takes off just the sharpness of the onion. Okay. Um, yeah, it takes off the sharpness, and then I think it also just kind of expedites the process. Um, yeah. Is we, it a full blanch, like with ice water? <laughs> We don't blanch it. No, we leave it okay. hot into the tub. Um, yeah, I think just trying to get rid of that sharpness. We do the same thing. We do a short rib taco, and we shave the onion really, really fine, and then we rinse it and then store it in ice cold water just to kind of get that bite off of it, um, just so it doesn't overpower the other flavors of what you're serving. Um, so pickled red onion. Uh, this is some watermelon radish that we actually, in, Lindsay was admiring the knife skills. We actually do it on a food processor. That's perfect. That's yeah. Nice. The first, I have some daikon at home that I can do that with. Yeah. The first week we opened, my kitchen manager, not Iqbal, previous kitchen manager, scheduled like 10 people on the same day and we still didn't have prep list written. So I just had everybody cut radishes by hand into tiny matchsticks because I, <laughs> I needed some breathing room. Uh, but we switched to the food processor. So uh, you can do this on a mandolin with that attachment. You can do it with a knife. You can do it on a grater. Uh, and then I just toss it with some lemon juice and kosher salt. And we're going to spread that over the top of our onions. Cool. Uh, and then after that, um, traditional kind of smoked fish accompaniment. We've got some capers that go on. Yeah, they're great. Um, I love a little salty pop of capers. For sure. Yeah. Uh, some, some fresh picked dill as well. Again, like super traditional flavors. Um, not breaking the mold on smoked fish with dill and capers. It's really aromatic. Yeah, it's, it's great. It all comes together real nice. Um, so about like so. What else do we have to put on this? Uh, and then these marigold gems, pretty much the last of the season. Um, these were grown in the little garden bed we were talking about right out in front of Bandit. I just picked them this afternoon. Um, and like we were saying, sometimes flowers are just to feel fancy. Uh, sometimes they add flavor. These marigold gems have like a bright, like lemony pop to them. So it just plays really well with everything else on the tostada. So that's uh, the finished dish available at Bandit every, every day. There it is, yay! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah, so, it came together. So anything you wanna like finish with, like is people can find you at Bandit at Grandpa's? Yeah, I spend most of my time at Bandit. Um, Grandpa's is doing their thing. We'll be 10 years old this summer, which is I exciting. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to charge 10 times as much for every pizza we go to in celebration. See how much people really, really support. Um, Gibbs Grandpa's, it looks like there's a little bit of patio time left this season, this yeah. weekend. We'll definitely head out there. Um, Gibbs is doing DJs. Bandit, we've got live music this Saturday, actually. We've been trying that out. It's a really nice vibe in the space. But we're there every day, 11 a.m. to 9 or 10 p.m., making fresh tortillas. Um, I think it's a really beautiful space. It's been a long time coming, so... Uh, yeah, you can come purchase tostadas, uh, tortillas. We also sell uh, masa harina, which is just add water masa that Masienda sells. You can get that there. You can buy a tortilla press. You can buy a book on how to make tortillas. So we've got you kind of set up for that end too, just, just celebrating corn and tortillas. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, our, our, we're really happy with the space and we love talking to people about what we're doing. So we'd be excited for everybody yeah. to come on by. It's really beautiful. It's, I speak from experience when I say it's a wonderful place to have an event. Yeah, um, yep. we, had a, we had a great event, uh, and it was just, it, it's, it's the opening of those doors and just having that flow is lovely. It's really cool. And the mural, I love the mural. So. Yeah, yep, local artist Stefan Madiak did a really beautiful mural yeah. for us on the wall. And yeah, it, was, uh, it took me seven years to open, so I had time to address all of the details. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, thank you, thank you for doing yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. It's cheers. a pleasure. Yeah, cheers to you. I'm going to get my own cocktail. Yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cheers, Chelsea. And then before we sign off tonight, um, we just want to thank our sponsors once more. So our official kitchen sponsor is Kessenix, where you can come on in and shop like a chef. And then we have our um, official wine pairing sponsor. Let me just switch drinks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cheers to you, Leopold's Book Bar Cafe. You can stop in and get the wine at Leopold's Gorgeous that they Shannon paired Block. with tonight's dish. We're all enjoying it in person. I didn't say it at the beginning, I did post it in the chat, but in case you missed it, you can become a Cap Times member by giving any amount to support our newsroom and you get an exclusive invite to join us every month. Um, eight Cap Times members and some Cap Times staffers join us. Um, but become a member at membership.captimes.com to get that invite. And then you could be here in this very spot next month <laughs> enjoying. I don't know if you'll get double drinks, but you'll get some wine. Um, so thank you to all of our Cap Times members for their continued support. 
Um, and for everybody for watching and your great comments, I will be scouring the social media channels, or my colleague Beck will be, and we will message whoever posts a photo from tonight that you will get to take home one of the bottles of wine from Leopold's Books Bar Cafe. That is all I have to say. Thank you guys again. Thank Another you. round of applause for Chef. Yay. Thank you. Hey, Iqbal, it's all Iqbal. <laughs> Thank you, Iqbal. We'll see you next month, everyone. Thank you.